In this video, we're gonna launch our first Facebook advertising campaign. So it doesn't matter if you're a complete beginner and you've never run a campaign, I'm gonna walk you through the exact steps that you need to set this up. Now, this is a video in the series that I've been producing on Facebook advertising. So there's a link in the description to the entire playlist. Um, if you've been watching each video, you should now have your advertising copy, your advertising creative, you should have your Facebook pixel tracking set up, you should have your business manager set up as well. So if any of those things are not in place and you don't know either what they are or you haven't set them up, yet um, click the link in the description to the full playlist go through the videos there's only a few there they're quite short and actionable and you should then be in a position where you're actually ready to launch your first campaign So once you've got everything ready, what do we need to do? Well, we need to head over to the Facebook Business Manager. So you need to go to business.facebook.com and that is gonna take you through to your Business Manager and you can use the little hamburger menu on the uh, left-hand side to then select Ads Manager and that is gonna take you through to your Facebook Ads Manager, okay? Now, this account is for a brand that we own, which is called Tamar Skincare. So this is the website. Um, it's a new acquisition that we made and I'm using this as a demonstration to set up some campaigns on Facebook, okay? So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna click the Create button in the top left corner. All right, and that's gonna give you some options. So you can choose different objectives. Now, a lot of people will run traffic campaigns, which is where you can see the cost per click and they'll be very focused on getting a low cost per click. This is the completely wrong approach. What you want to do is you want to run a campaign based on conversions, typically if you're running an e-commerce store, which is what the brand that I'm using as an example does. If you're looking for lead generation, you can select the lead event. This is gonna be great because this is gonna get people through to actually submitting lead forms, contacting you, etc. So to be honest with you, there's really two main objectives that I use on Facebook. One is going to be sales, which is gonna be a conversions campaign. The other is gonna be leads, which is either gonna be a conversion campaign or it's going to be a lead form event, okay? So this is where they're actually filling out a form directly on Facebook. As this is a e-commerce brand, we're gonna be using sales. Now, I do sometimes use, just for completeness, I wanna run through each of these, so awareness is quite good. It can be an objective that we use, but we use it like 1% of the time. It's very niche in terms of how we're actually using it. We're not really using traffic campaigns pretty much ever. Again, it's not that these things are bad, but if you're running a traffic campaign expecting sales, you're gonna get a lot of clicks and no buyers because Facebook is not optimizing towards the objective, the event that you actually want, which is uh, a purchase, okay? So they're optimizing for people that are gonna click on your ad, does not mean they're gonna buy. So just bear that in mind. Engagement can be good. Again, you can build up engagement audiences, you can retarget them. Um, you can also run engagement campaigns to retargeting audiences uh, to keep your brand and your content in front of people. So these are quite good and we do use them. We have leveraged them for events as well, but in general, we're gonna be always looking towards sales and uh, leads as a two event. So I'm gonna select sales. I'm just gonna click continue. Now it's asking, do you wanna run an Advantage Plus shopping campaign, which is a bit more um, of an automated campaign type, or do we wanna do it manually? I'm gonna select manual because um, I actually wanna be able to choose certain parameters, certain setups, and we will be using Facebook's best practices regardless, so this is gonna be the best way that we wanna set this up. So you're gonna to wanna to give this a name. Um, I always call it conversions because it's a conversions campaign. You can then put the date. So I, I sometimes put the actual conversion objective that I'm optimizing for, so conversions, purchase. Um, I would also put maybe the specific type of product. So for this demonstration, I'm actually gonna be using the um, anti-aging face oil. So again, what I might do is just copy that, um, go back to Facebook Ads Manager, just put that in so I know, and then I'm just gonna put the date as well. That's pretty much how I do the naming. So it's conversion campaign, it's a purchase objective. Um, anti-aging face oil, which is the uh, product that I'm promoting, and the date as well, okay? There is some other things you can add if you wanted to, so we'll probably be using campaign budget optimization, so you could put CBO in there, which represents campaign budget optimization, which I'll explain what that is in a moment. Um, you could add AP for automatic placements. So it just depends how many campaigns you're running, and you wanna have your own nomenclature in terms of how you're actually naming these campaigns, okay? You can keep it very, very simple. Um, it's not gonna impact the performance, so it can make any difference to that, but when you are going back over and you're looking at the account, you wanna be able to know what is what, and you wanna be able to categorize your different tests. And again, when you're doing things like reporting within the Facebook uh, report section or within the ads manager and you're filtering campaigns, if you have clear naming, uh, you can then filter by certain names and you'll know what's happening, okay? So you can have like, a lot of people use things like uh, TOFU, which we use as well for top of funnel. Um, you could have things like retarg for retargeting. You could have things like STST, which is like a strategic test. There's lots of different options here. I'm not gonna go through all of them. Find something that works for you essentially. So we don't need any special ad categories. So we're running a sales campaign. 
and we can turn advantage campaign budget optimization on, um, which is essentially just going to enable us to optimize the budget at the campaign level, not at the ad set level. So uh, this just basically means Facebook is gonna go through and um, find the correct placements or the correct ad sets to spend your money on. You're not gonna have to do that yourself and set different ones. So we don't always use campaign budget optimization, but it's, uh, it's quite a quick and easy way of doing things. And it allows Facebook to have a little bit more control and spend the money where it feels is the best opportunity. So for now, I'm gonna leave that on. In terms of how much budget you need, now look, some people are gonna test with five pounds or $5 a day. I've seen that time and time again. That's not the way that we do things. To be honest, typically when we're working with clients, we recommend you have at least a hundred pounds per day budget. Depending on the business, sometimes it's extremely higher than that. Sometimes it has to be pulled back slightly when you're starting. For this brand, for this campaign, I'm just gonna put a hundred as the daily budget initially. And again, this is something that has to be uh, decided by you as a business owner, or if you're working with a um, client and you're an agency owner like myself, you're gonna to need to make sure that this is something that is agreed upon. The key here is you need to have a certain amount of runway for testing. So let's just say I only have a thousand pounds. Well, that would only give me 10 days of marketing, which is not really enough to figure out what's working, what isn't for a brand new client or brand. So you need to be able to have a sustainable budget, but you also need to be realistic. Let's say it's a lead generation campaign and you're expecting your lead cost to be anywhere around 50 pounds, but you're only spending 10 pounds a day. Well, that means you're gonna maybe get a lead every five days which is just not enough for one Facebook to learn. It's gonna be so slow. Um, it's not enough for you to get any lead volume because let's say that one lead comes in and it's low quality. Maybe the business owner or, or if you are the business owner, you're, you're thinking, okay, this isn't working, but actually you just need more volume to even tell if something's working or not. So you need to be realistic. You need to be able to get multiple conversions per day for your budget. So you know, we're running a, an e-commerce campaign here. The product is around 45 pounds. Um, 100 pounds a day we should be able to get multiple sales per day with this assuming everything is working as it needs to and if we're not at least we're spending enough that we can learn fairly quickly what isn't isn't working so 100 pounds a day is what i'm going to put there um, i'm just going to click next now one thing i want to go through very very quickly while i'm at the stage is the hierarchy of campaigns ad sets and ads if you're not familiar with that concept so at the top here we have this kind of like little folder icon that is your campaign so obviously as we went through i'm going to go through it again but that's where you set the objective you can set the campaign budget optimization and you can also select the bid strategy as well. So highest volume, and there's a few other different options there, cost per result goal, bid caps, things like that. I'm not gonna go into all of this. I'm just gonna leave it at the highest volume for the time being. That's kind of beyond the scope of this video, but I will make future videos going into the different bidding types and things like that that are available. The ad set is where you're gonna set all of your targeting. Okay, so even if you're going broad, which is something I highly recommend you do, we're still gonna to wanna to set everything at the ad set level. That is the place where you choose those things. That's where you can add in retargeting audiences. It's where you can um, set certain parameters. It's also where you can select the actual conversion event if you're running a conversions campaign, which I'm gonna get into in just a second. And then the ad itself, which we'll go into momentarily, is gonna be actually where you add the creative, okay? So there's three levels of this. Um, you can have multiple ad sets inside a campaign and you can have multiple ads inside of ad sets. And I'll talk about some of that in a second. So. Let's give this ad set a name. Um, I normally rate this to the targeting, so I'm gonna uh, put broad as the targeting. I'm also gonna put the age, so I'm just gonna do 18 plus. Um, and I would also do the location if I'm marketing to different locations. Okay, so let's just say like UK, broad, 18 plus. Okay, that's pretty good. If it's uh, women only, I might do uh, F female, 18 plus is fine. Or I'd do like M for male uh, if it's men that I'm targeting. This brand is more geared towards women, so that's gonna be the targeting initially, okay? Now, here you're choosing where the location of the uh, conversion event is happening, so it's a website for me. This is where I can select the event. So, by default, it's put to add to cart, which is not what I want, so I actually wanna change that through, and I wanna select purchase, okay? So, um, again, I've set all the pixels up, everything is set up correctly, so from the tracking side of things, like I say, if you're not uh, familiar with that, or you don't have the tracking in place, there's a link to the playlist where you can actually watch uh, my in-depth tracking setup videos in the description of this uh, video here. But essentially what we wanna do here is we wanna select the purchase conversion event. Now here you can turn on dynamic creative. This basically means that rather than having five or six ads with individual copy, creative, things like that, you actually combine them into one dynamic ad, which allows Facebook to essentially match the different parameters. So for example, if you have like a one image or one video or three videos, two different copies, two different headlines, Facebook will make all of the different variations based on that for you without you having to build them out as individual ads. And it will then spend the money on the combinations that it prefers that it's seeing having the best response from its users and from its inventory of users essentially. So this means that Facebook can have a bit more control over what is getting spent and what isn't, which can help with the overall performance. It can also help align your goals with Facebook's goals, which is to essentially deliver a positive user experience 
to their platform users and Facebook will therefore be spending the budget on the ad not that's necessarily going to get the best result for you but it's that's going to get the best ultimately result for them in many ways in the sense of providing a positive experience so if people are engaging with it if it's hitting the right type of response from users you're going to be getting that ad shown more frequently or that combination of assets in the dynamic creative shown more frequently and the key here is we want something that aligns with our business objective to get sales at the right rate but it also aligns with Facebook's objective to deliver a positive user experience. And when you get those two together, that's where you can really have a strong ad. And this ties into things like the quality score, which is beyond the scope again of this video. I wanna keep things simple, um, but essentially it does a lot of the work for you in terms of testing the different combinations to see what works well and what doesn't. I'm gonna turn Dynamic Creative on for this test. What I typically do is where I have clients and as our agency where we have clients that have a lot bigger budgets, we will typically use Dynamic Creative more. When we only have a small daily budget and we maybe only have a couple of different creatives i don't bother with dynamic creative testing now the reason why is if they're not yet if there's literally two or three creatives i can just build them out individually and it's very clear to see what's working what isn't it's clear to see what's getting spent what isn't um and this works really really well now for certain clients where we're spending a lot more as a daily budget i would typically build it out as a dynamic creative test because there's more budget being pushed behind it it can actually start to learn what's working what isn't um, and it just works overall better from my experience so that's an option again, basically rule of thumb, low budget, you can turn it off, high daily budget, you can turn it on, okay? Now the audience here, this is where we can select the targeting. So you could enter a custom audience, which is a retargeting audience, which you would build out inside your audience manager, which you can access by clicking the dots there um, and going into audiences. I'm not gonna do that now because that's not what we're gonna be doing. Here you can select the location, you can select the age, you can select the gender, so uh, we identify we're gonna be targeting um, women. Now, detailed targeting, this is where I can start adding interest. Okay, so I could add, uh, this is a skincare brand, so I could add skincare, for example. Okay, something like that. I'm not gonna do that because Facebook will actually be able to identify what this product is, what this brand is doing. It doesn't need me to tell it, and I don't really want to limit myself by um, adding in detail targeting. Now, Facebook will actually, and it says here, you may deliver ads beyond your audience, basically regardless. <laughs> so it's gonna do this anyway. It's gonna expand into broad. I don't need to actually put any targeting here. Facebook will do that for me and we'll get better results essentially without adding anything in. So again, just for completeness, I do wanna mention for some clients, we do have interest-based targeting ad sets and they do work well. Uh, sometimes we're split testing broad versus interest. As time goes on, the more and more I do this, the more I see broad working better. It's a more reliable audience and you also don't get the ups and downs of performance um, in the same way as you would with an interest group or like a lookalike audience. The other issue here is that some of these audiences that are smaller, they will perform well for a short period of time and then they will drop off. Broad is something that if you switch to broad targeting, you're not going to have to worry about always testing different audiences, which is an entire process. And again, if you don't have a massive budget, and you're thinking, well, did this ad not work because of the audience or did it not work because of the ad? Like you're, you're adding all of these variables and then was it this headline with this audience that worked better or was it this creative with this audience? There's so many variables, it doesn't really work. So uh, if you just go broad targeting, you're eliminating an entire process, which is essentially timesing the amount of tests you'd have to do um, by the number of audiences you want to test, which would make the whole process longer and you can just go broad and then you can focus on creatives, which is gonna make the biggest impact. So we're leaving that blank essentially placements i just leave automatic placements again you can select story placements and have a story any creative things like this i'm just going to leave it as advantage plus placements which essentially is automatic placements and we're optimizing here for uh, conversion so now we can move across to the actual ad itself so you can set the facebook page um, i normally give this a name so uh, this was a dynamic creative test so i'm just going to put dct for dynamic creative test um, and i'm just going to put images okay what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start adding some images. So what are the best practices when you do this? Well, what I would say is you do not want to build out a dynamic creative with all of the variables possible, which would be essentially five different primary text, uh, five different headlines. You would have up to 10 different assets like images or videos. I would instead limit it down. So we typically do under five and we do like around sort of like three to four sometimes. So what I do here is I'm just gonna select images. I'm just gonna choose a few different images. Um, not all of these are actually of the correct product but I'm just gonna add them there anyway so now I've got three different image tests the key here really is you want to have a concept okay and this ties back into my previous video as well as talking about when you're running creatives and you're planning for creatives you want to have a different concept so you could have an ad set per concept so this concept for example could be images and it could be price so let's just say I had all of my images related to the fact that our products are cheaper, or it could be images and it could be the fact that it's an organic product, okay? So this, this could be my concept. 
So I can literally put this here into the ad set level so that I can see later on which ones work well. Now, all of these creatives should then therefore match that concept. So we don't want to have one image here that's talking about price, one image that's talking about the fact that products are organic and you know, ethically sourced. We don't want to have another creative that's talking about the fact that you need to, you know, your daily skincare routine and you need to use this product daily. What we want to do instead is have three creatives, let's say, that all have the same concept, but they're variations. So maybe we had like an image here that has a certain background type, a certain model inside the shot. Maybe it has a product in it. So that's like one test and we're, we're testing the variable there. Then we have the same concept again, talking about the organic um, skincare angle, but we're showing it a slightly different way. Maybe we have the um, Soil Association badges larger maybe we have different color schemes maybe we have a different background maybe we remove the model or replace the model with a different model something like that okay so you can see here these images are pretty similar they just have different variants um, again these aren't the final ones i would use i'm just giving this as an example key here is you want to have all of the creatives matching around a concept but variations of communicating that concept which ties back in like i say to the videos that i made previously in this series about creative and copy now you can turn optimize each creative uh, creative for each person off um, primary text, so this is going to show, if I just put the preview on here, this is going to show um, above the um, image. And in fact, let's just grab the URL. So I'm just going to wrap the product URL here. I'm just going to put this into there. And therefore, we should start seeing the ad. Um, so you've got your headline. The primary text is going to go above. Okay, so if I just go up to here, I'm just going to write primary text one. And you'll see it up there. Okay, so this is going to be the longer section for your copy. You're then going to have your headline here and you can have your description. I wouldn't worry too much about the description. To be fair, it displays under the headline in some placements, depending how long your headline is. You can completely leave this blank or just add one. I wouldn't bother adding multiple descriptions and all that stuff. Uh, that's not really a variable. It's not a high leveraged action that I would take. Primary text one, you can then add another one. So again, you might want to test either like, if you've done this before and you have a winning copy, you could test your winning copy plus a new copy um, against your uh, creative concept or you could test multiple copies. The key here is we don't want to test multiple variables at once, nine times out of 10, because it's not going to necessarily create the best result. So if we're testing different image creatives, what I would do is I would typically test that against one copy variation and see the results from that. And then I can run another test focused on the copy, for example, okay, things like that. So it's not to say that you can't rerun the same test with like your winning copy. So if the copy worked well, you could then take your, some of your winning ads and you could build another creative test with your winning ads versus a new copy, things like that is totally fine. What you wouldn't want to do is have like, for example, here, and let's do primary text three. You wouldn't want to have all of these different variations mixed with all of these different images or videos, because then the issue is you've just got too much scale. Like there's too many different variables that you can have, especially if you then start throwing in different headlines. And it could become quite unclear to see what has worked and what hasn't worked when you're reviewing the data. So to keep this really simple, and especially at lower budgets, I would just stick to having like one or two primary text max. Then you've got your tracking event, so it's showing that it's all set up correctly, um, and you're pretty much good to go. So from there, you would just click publish, and that is gonna load up your campaign. It's gonna publish it, and you're then gonna be able to go live with your ad campaign. So in the next video, I'm gonna be talking about what actually happens once you've spent some money, run your campaign, and you have some data back because that's when you can start analyzing the results. So I'll show you that on a few different live accounts. Um, we'll go through all of that so you can start making decisions because ultimately what this is doing is it's amplifying your brand messaging. It's getting your products or your store or your campaign out in front of new people. And what we wanna be able to do there is we wanna be able to see what is working and what isn't. And we then wanna be able to make decisions to help optimize the results. If you're paying 50 pounds per lead, can we get it down to 40 or can we keep it at 50 but spend double the amount per day? Um, if you're getting purchases at 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, is that the correct cost per purchase for your brand? Can we drive it down or can we get more sales or retain the same CPA? All of these are questions that are very, very important and are gonna define how you move forward once you've actually launched the campaign. That being said, thanks very much for taking the time to watch the video. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, drop any comments in the comment section. There's also a link um, in the description to book a call with me if you want to talk about marketing. As I said, I run a marketing agency. We help brands scale to multiple seven figures per year using paid advertising. We have a great track record with our clients. If you're interested in having a conversation about either a smaller project or a larger project, please book a call directly with me. We can have a call and uh, see if there's opportunity for us to work together. Thank you very much.